erudite necromancer. That's right, guys. The erudite necromancer. That's what we're talking about here. This suggestion was sent in by Greldek, one of my viewers, and it's a fantastic suggestion. I'm going to tell you why. I, originally, I didn't even think about this. I thought, well, you know, everybody's going to be a high elf, or they're going to be a dark elf, or a gnome. And, you know, the erudites, for most people, they're kind of like a forgotten race. You know, they're just way out there and arid and pineal. And uh, nowadays, nobody really thinks about it because you have all this defiant gear that gives you max intelligence, and everybody's got 255 intelligence before they know it. So, shoot, you could be one of the worst uh, race class combos and still have 255 intelligence with massive mana. But back in the day... And I'm talking back in the day, this was the intelligence powerhouse caster. If you wanted an intelligence-based caster like a mage, necromancer, wizard, you needed to be an erudite. Because they start out, as you saw earlier, with 142 intelligence. If you look at the other uh, race combos, the other ones are still in the 130s. And that's very significant because mana items, uh, intelligence items, are very hard to come by early on so you really want to get this character but there is a trade-off and the trade-off is you start in pineal and you can see where i'm going through here this place is like a maze you're going to get lost now that guy tormented soul keep him in mind and i'm going to recommend this again i i didn't want to do this but if you want a free trip out to the newbie lands just attack him and uh, he will send you there real quick with the suicide but don't do it after level six or level five because you'll lose experience now these are the spell vendors you're going to need to know about. Uh, they are all located here and this is a list of spells they have. When you get some money, come back here and buy as many spells as you can. You're going to need those. And here, they're all centrally located in one area you can see right there. And you will find the ones that, uh, this guy's just basically got the general spells right here, but you'll find the ones that uh, have the class specific spells. So you're going to need some money first. You're going to need to go out to the newbie area and hunt something. And it's not a bad newbie area, but there are disadvantages to it. It doesn't support leveling past level 5. So you've got to really start thinking, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk about those things as we go forward. But just a little bit about Payneal here. It's out of the way. You can see it's it's a mess getting here, and you're not going to have the plane of knowledge book on the Agnar server, so you're going to have to do everything the long way. And getting out of here, it ain't going to be easy. So you only have a couple options of what you can do once you hit, let's say, level six or so. So now you found the spell vendor that you need to go to, and this guy is called Danis Keelum. Now, uh, the spells you want to get here uh, are Disease Cloud, Siphon Strength, Life Spike, and Grim Aura. I wouldn't bother with the low-level pet, the first one you get, because, frankly, I didn't really need it. I, I just meleeed, and a lot of the newbie stuff is pretty easy to kill. And I wanted to do that to get my defense up. But if you want to get the pet, you can, but you still got to have bone chips for it. So therein lies the problem, and it's kind of a flimsy pet, so it's all up to you. If you want it, get it, get the bone chips, and go for it. Later on, you want to get spells like Poison Bolt. This is a very good spell. Clinging Darkness is your snare spell. You definitely want to get that. So Clinging Darkness, Poison Bolt, save up your dough, and get those. And then you want to come all the way back out here and get yourself back to the newbie zone. Get some hard-earned silver, let's just say. <laughs> And out you go. And this is this place is so confusing. You're, you're going to be so happy when you're out of here. I'm telling you. And you get back to the real world where everybody else is. There's not going to be a lot of people. But go through this teleporter and bing. You are in another area. And I know, you know I got lost in here too. And you may too. But uh, from here, you can see where we're going to go. I hope you can see. Because <laughs> frankly, if you take the wrong teleporter, you're just going to loop. But after a while, you'll figure it out. You'll memorize where to go and uh, how to get out of here. So this is the area you want to be in. You want to get over here where I am on the upper right. 
I don't know, I always hate places with teleporters. It's always so confusing. But do you want to be right here? And uh, not the other one I went to. But you can go to the other one if you just want to check it out anyway. So here you go. We're here and ready to teleport. And now that you're here, it's all straightforward. Now there are a couple things to go over when you get here. Uh, when you get out there, you're going to see the Tomasa Soulbinder. And you may want to bind with him, but frankly, it's all up to you. Because there are advantages of binding with him. If you bind down near near the bottom where you know the city door is, you can um, you can be closer to newbie zones if you die. So here we go. Let's let's do this. Let's go right through here, and you got to go around here. Just think how long it took him to make this. Forever. And if you're like me, not going good or going on uh, winding stairs, it's gonna be trouble. So here we go. We take a left. Now, that is elevated. Please note that rock there. That rock is significant. Click the rock, and you go up. Now, when you come down, there's another rock to click. Get it? See that rock there? You barely saw it. That is a switch to go down. So when you get back here, what you do? You see the rock, you click the rock, the elevator comes up, go inside, click the rock, go back down. From here you have two options. You can go, well you can jump off this to the hole, or you can kill yourself, or you can take a right here and go to pay Neil. I mean go to, uh, take a left, go to Toxula, or you can take a right. Now I prefer to go to Toxula, but later on you can decide. Now in this example, I've decided to go to uh, the newbie grounds out here. You can go to talk to the forest if you want and fight over there, but for best results, come over here because there are a lot of bone chips you can get. Now this guy's a guard and there's all these friendly wussy bats. So come up here and the first thing you want or you need is you need to get these decayed skeletons. Not because they're easy or they have weapons and stuff like that, but because they have bone chips. And this zone drops a lot of bone chips because they know that necromancers are going to start here. So you notice there's just a whole horde of uh, decayed skeletons out there. Also there's a quest with your guild master to turn in bat wings and snake fangs. If you want to do that you can you can proceed to do that but I would just focus on these guys. Get as many of them as you can. There will be other newbie players out here that will be trying to uh, kill steal your decayed skeleton so just jump on it real fast and you can see right here this is why you don't even need the pet because the pet will take half of your experience. And look at this, I'm just with my steak knife here. I'm just I'm just tearing him a new one. It's no problem at all and he's white to me. Look at that. So you're going to have the same experience. It's going to be no problem at all. And that's why I don't really recommend the pet early on. Let's just get through these levels fast because they get really tedious. So we're going to do this and uh Stay with Mr. Bats over there. Anything, anything in this zone, this area you can kill. It maxes out about level four-ish or five. I found that at level four, I kind of felt like, hey, it's time to get out of this place. So try to save up as much of your items as you can. As many bone chips, save up uh, whatever you can sell. And then what you want to do is you want to go back about level four, go back to your Necromancer Guild and sell every single thing you've got buy as many of the spells as you can going forward and then you want to head out to Toxila Forest because over there that zone can level you up to level 8 level 9 or so and you'll meet a lot of other people there you'll meet wizards and magicians um, paladins clerics all the other erudites are going to be out there and that's going to be a much better supporting cast than here now if you want to stay here and you want to level You've got another option, and that's called the Warrens. But there are some drawbacks. Number one, a lot of people out in Toxula aren't going to be really dying to come to the Warrens at a low level because they don't need to. If you're in Toxula Force, you can go kill the kitty cats. Over there's an area that's a little cat island. You can kill them, and that'll level you up to like 13, 14, maybe even 15. So you could stay over, they could stay over there. There's no reason to come all the way down here. And keep in mind that the Warrens is a dungeon. And even though the entrance is, uh, you can, is doable by you, the problem you have is they're kobolds and they tend to run away when they're low on health. And if they run away, what happens is they'll bring more. 
And it's not like out here or out in Toxila where you can go in Toxila, you can hunt uh, a kobold there or a snake, and the agro radiuses are so small that they're not going to jump in and help their friend. The friends aren't going to help you, them. So that means you can get a lot more single pulls and easier leveling versus going into the warrens and uh, leveling up there. Also, if you're going to go to the warrens, I would recommend a group there. Uh, it's just a lot safer and much more efficient than uh, just trying to solo it yourself. But if you're brave and you know what you're doing and you have uh, full confidence in your necro abilities, by all means, try the warrens, level up a little bit because you'll be able to level up a lot higher than you will in Toxula. But once again, it, to summarize, level up here about four, maybe five if you can. Sell your stuff, buy all the spells that I'm going to show you, and then go to Toxula Forest. Okay, so we're back now, and... Uh, we're back to our friendly necromancer's uh, spell vendor. As you can see, we sold all our trash. Just up, just kept selling, loading up and selling trash, trash. And we got some money. We got some crack staffs. Remember, those sell for almost a platinum. You don't need much of them. But you're going to see the necromancer has a lot of spells. And these are the spells that we do have. Clinging, darkness, poison bolt, disease clouds, all the ones I talked about. And these are the, this is what you're gonna what you want. And this is how I put it on my spell bar. I start with clinging darkness, which is a snare, but it doesn't last that long at this level. So that's optional. You can you can open with a poison bowl and then later go with a clinging darkness to snare them so they won't run away. It all depends. Or if you have a group, you can snare them first, and then a the group kills them really fast. So open with a snare. Then I do a siphon strength if possible, a disease cloud, poison bolt, life tap or life spike. And I have a fear in there too. And in Grim Aura for myself, and there's a pet spell. Now let's take a look at these uh, spells you have over here. Skip Shadow Step, skip Dead Eye. Dark Pact, it's okay, it'll heal your other uh, members. It's up to you. Um, dark, dark, uh, dark Empathy, excuse me, that will do that. It'll take some of your health. Ward Undead is useful against undeads. It's uh, give you more bang for the buck. It's a nice nuke there. Doesn't seem like much, but uh, for skeletons, it can smoke them really good. Gather Shadows is invisible at level 7. Vampiric Embrace, uh, I like this too. It gives your ch attacks a chance to steal uh, life. So if you can afford it, this is a nice one to get. Also, I like Mend the Bones. It'll allow you to heal your pet so you don't just let them die off. That's a good one too. If you're in a battle and you just need to pop a little heal on them, and it's a decent amount. Really, 22 to 32 hit points. I like it. Yeah. And then uh, we down, have down there in part strength. Mm, it's not that important. You got to look at your, your, your money totals. You don't have that much money now. And if you didn't get those crack staffs, well, you're not going to have two platinum. You maybe have w half of what this is or maybe one platinum. Then you got to really, really think. The bone walk is in the next pet spell. If you can afford it, get it. The pets are really your strength. Uh, wave of enfeeblement, it's, it's okay. You can get that. Life draw, I like that. I like uh, engulfing darkness, heat blood. You can see you're going to need some money <laughs> somewhere down the line. And uh, it's going to be hard because people aren't going to leave as much trash laying on the ground. So money will, will be scarce. Okay, spook the dead, engulfing darkness. That's engulfing darkness is better than clinging darkness. It'll last a lot longer. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about endured endured disease or anything. I'd get the life draw. Look at this, siphons a hundred hit points. That's sweet. It really is. It's not that mana efficient, but it's still a good one. Convoke shadow. This is a pet spell. So, look at these, and we're at level four. And you see, I got to make room here. We're, we're about to be extremely poor. <laughs> So just by watching this video, you know just about how much money you're going to need. And I would recommend if you can get even three platinum, you can't, then do it. But if not, just get what you can. Okay, so finally we're out in Toxula Forest. And like I mentioned, I like this area because as you can see here, some of these kobolds are yellow. And, and, and if this were a dungeon, they'd be all mobbed on you. But this ain't a dungeon. This is out here and it's a noob area. And see, he resists that. And you can get these guys. They're not a problem at all. Look at this. I'm just going to melee him and then pop a poison bolt on him. And then that's it. Look at it. Woo. 
got that poison on you and this poison is not bad it does pretty good it takes 10 damage each time there's a clinging, clinging darkness so he can't run away and uh, that's it you know nice it's just two spells like that you got to watch your kobolds they do run away a little bit faster and they are quick you can also opt for snakes but you got to be really careful with the snakes because the snakes do poison you and that is deadly so if you're in a group and you got somebody that can uh, resist, you know, cast endure poison on you, that's a help. Or you got a cleric, erudite cleric that can go ahead and heal you from that, then fantastic. So you, you got to see if you're in a group. But if you're not in a group, I'd be careful about that. I would just go for these silly fire beetles here. They're, they're pretty easy. They don't poison you or anything. And look at this. Just, you know, just melee them away and take your time. And your skills will go up pretty quick. Now, where we are located on the map is uh, right by this poacher guy. So you got to be careful of poacher. He will aggro on you for sure. So just, just be aware of that. Also, you can work your way a little bit south uh, from the bridge there. I mean, down towards the bottom of the map. And it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, you will find more of the, those giant fire beetles and snakes. Look at that. No problem. Just whack-a-mole and got him and then you can uh, use the life tap to bring yourself back up and you will watch the mobs here are not so aggro so you could actually sit down and med here and this is one of the nice things they've done with this zone and you won't get attacked usually what happens when you sit down your aggro radius uh, attraction radius becomes much much higher but just to be safe I move off to the side here so I don't um, get jumped yeah so Right about here is a good, a nice little safe area. Not a whole lot comes here. You're close to the river. And these fire beetles, they won't do anything. But look at the abundance of kobolds running around everywhere. Just all over the place. So anyway, try to level up as high as you can here. Now onto the left side of the screen where you see the dock where the red star is over the left. If you take that dock and go to the left further, you'll be on the kitty cat island. You can level up there much higher. But after this, try to leave this area.